Bless you guys, it's me, Chris Lover Jesus, back with another video. I pray you're having a blessed and awesome and wonderful day in the Lord Jesus. I miss y'all. It's been a minute. <laughs> but um, yeah, so you guys, I have for you a warning dream from the Lord. This was a pre-rapture warning dream from the Lord that this brother emailed to me. So thank you so much, brother. We're going to go ahead and jump into this and see what exactly he experienced. Y'all, it says in the Word of God in Acts 2, 17, that the Lord is going to pour out his spirit on all flesh we're gonna go ahead and read it I want to say this more often because I want you know people who haven't watched before to know that you know this is totally in the Bible and this is what exactly is going on this is happening and the Lord said it was going to happen so these are not just dreams and visions that people are making up in their heads so that they can come on YouTube you're crazy if you think you could convince thousands of people to do that no thousands of people don't want to just come on and lie about a God especially Christians okay Christians who want to live a righteous and holy life and not be lying stealing thieving and all that those things those are what ungodly unbelievers believers do our brains don't even work that way our brains are renewed in the Lord Jesus Christ if you born again you know what I'm talking about okay so it says in the last days God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. In those days, I will pour out my spirit even on my servants, men and women alike, and they will prophesy and I will cause wonders in the heavens above, signs on the earth below, blood and fire, clouds of smoke. The sun will become dark and the moon will turn to blood red before that great and glorious day of the Lord arrives. But everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. So this is what we are dealing with right now. The Word of God who has all the prophecy, it tells us the future, it tells us what's going to happen. So y'all need to buckle up, get your Jesus on, and <laughs> preach the Word in season and out of season. Amen. And we are in the season right now. We have to be working. We have to be getting our Jesus apparel on, walking around, especially right now, because when the rapture happens and your clothes are left on the floor, they're going to be like, oh, these are Christians that left. That's weird, right? And that is what God wants. That is what he told me. I was like, what's so important, Lord, about like getting so many of these like hats, you know, wearing Jesus hats and clothes out to all of our brothers and sisters. And he's just like, bam. It's going to be a testimony for the left behind. So with that being said, y'all, let's go ahead and get into this dream that this brother had. Today, I would like to share with you a pre rapture warning dream that the Lord wanted me to share today. I had this dream on January 18th, 2024. In my dream, I was teaching my cousin some ABCs and assisting her to do some homework in the living room. I look at the window and it was nice, bright, and sunny outside. Then I saw Jesus appearing and standing on the clouds wearing a white robe with golden belt. He is so beautiful and I'm so glad to see Jesus appearing on the clouds in my dream. I did not hear the trumpet sound, but he did smile at me and say, and he did like this, come on, come on. Then he disappeared. Then I look at the window again and I saw the sky turning dark, showing that Jesus is here to take his bride, his born again Christians, home to be with him in heaven. I did not see lightning flashing from the east to the west, nor hearing the, the trumpet sound. But I knew that Jesus is here and has appeared on the clouds, getting ready to rapture us to heaven. Then one of my cousins asked me how I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I shared my quick testimony to him and I immediately led my cousin to salvation prayer so me and my cousin can go home and be with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in heaven. Then I saw the sky turning dark red which represents a huge warning that God's wrath and God's judgment is now in effect and it's getting closer and closer, coming straight to America and around the world. Finally, I saw the sky turning red-orange, which 
which represents a final warning that Jesus Christ is still coming back for his bride. For those who are left behind will face God's wrath and God's judgment in the next seven years of tribulation unless he and she repent and be filled with the Holy Spirit before the rapture. And then I went back to sleep on the couch near the front window. And then I woke up. Now Jesus has shown me signs from the sky that he is coming back quickly like a thief in the night. The Bible says on 1 Thessalonians 5 and 2, For you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. So when Jesus says, come on, come on, that means that he is still waiting for you to repent and be filled with the Holy Spirit so he can rapture you to heaven and God will protect you from his wrath in the last days. On 1 Thessalonians 5 and 9, For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. It also means that this earth is only your temporary home and that heaven is your real eternal home with eternal life with him forever. Jesus is also preparing your mansions and your wedding banquets with lots of friends and lots of food for you and he has some great rewards including eternal crowns in heaven. Everyone else including unbelievers, lukewarm Christians and other worldly cardinal disobedient Christians who deny Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, denying the rapture and other God's warnings from dreams, visions, and the gospel sermon series, and not receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit with water, they will be left behind. God is giving you all a final warning, a final warning to repent and be filled with the Holy Spirit and be baptized with water as well immediately before the rapture comes, or you will be left behind, which is a very, very bad decision to do that. So please receive God's warning. Repent and give your life to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and be filled with the Holy Spirit and water so you all can be rapture ready and be safe with Jesus Christ in heaven forever. And then the Bible also says on Matthew 24, verse 36 to 44, but of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Then two men will be in the field, one will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mills, one will be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allow his house to be broken into. Therefore you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. So if you never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and even if you backslide away from God and into sin before the rapture, then say this simple repentance prayer with me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I am a sinner, and I'm asking you to forgive me for all my sins in the name of Jesus. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins, and that you are raised from the dead the third day, so that I shall be saved. So thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving my life, and for dying on the cross for all my sins. I accept you now as my Lord and Savior. Wash me, cleanse me, protect me, and cover me with your blood, and fill me with your Holy Spirit with fire. I receive you now as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' my name I pray forever and ever. Amen. So God bless you all. Jesus love you all. Peace and shalom. <laughs> Thank you, brother. That was beautiful. Very, very well said. Amen, amen, amen. I love all the scripture verses too. And I want to read a little bit for you guys as well, because 
it's so important, y'all. It's so important that we um, we focus on the Lord. And Jesus tells us that He wants us to love Him. He wants us to focus on Him, you know. for In order for us to be ready, we have to be right with God. We can't be living a double lifestyle with Jesus, you know. We have to be 100% in. Amen. We have to be producing that fruit that comes from abiding in Christ. If you notice in your life that you are not producing the good fruit of Jesus, the good fruit of love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, you know, meekness, gentleness, and you're feeling a lot of anger, hate, resentment, unforgiveness, uh, slander, you're gossiping, you're hating your coworkers, your family, you feel rage, you feel like you're in drunkenness, you're in addictions, you're in lust, you're in adultery, you're in fornication. If you are in like this two completely different lines there, and when you're out of the will of God, when you're out of Christ, when you're not abiding in Jesus and living for Jesus, you see that dark side of all those things that I just said. And then you have the fruit side, which Jesus says, you can't even produce unless you are in me. So, if you are not producing those fruits, you know that you are not in Jesus Christ. So, in order to produce those fruits, you need to come to Jesus. You need to repent for everything that you've been doing right now. And you need to let Jesus prune you and start producing those good fruits. Amen. He talks about that in John chapter 15. He says, I am the true grapevine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit, and he prunes the branches that do bear fruit, so they will produce even more. You have already been pruned and purified by the message I have given you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you, for a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine, and you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. So, it is your responsibility, it is your job to remain in Jesus Christ, Okay, this is a battle that we are going through, but the Lord, He always says that He gives you a way of escape. And there is no temptation that comes for you that the rest of us aren't going through. We're all going through the same temptations, but the Lord, He delivers us from those. He gives us a way to escape if we choose it. He says, Remain in me and I'll remain in you, for a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine, and you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Yes, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit, for apart from me you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers, and such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned." But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. When you produce much fruit, you are, tr- you are my true disciples. This brings great joy and glory to my Father. So if you are producing much fruit, you are truly the Lord's disciples. If you are not producing any fruit right now in your life, it means that you are not abiding in Jesus. And so you need to come to Christ. You need to pray to Him, talk to Him, get in the Word of God, read the Bible, and ask the Lord for forgiveness for the sins that you have been committing right now and your backslidden state and your lukewarmness. And just know that He forgives you when you come to Him with an honest heart. Don't let the enemy try to condemn you and trick you after you have come to the Lord Jesus and asked for forgiveness that He doesn't forgive you because He does. So, don't let the enemy try to fight you and control you in your mind because this is how we're going to fight the Word of God. The enemy is going to come against you when you try to return to Jesus from your lukewarm state and your backslidden state. The enemy is going to hate it and he's going to attack you. He's going to bring things your way. He's going to try to destroy you. He's going to try to make you feel 
awful and disappointed and depressed. And you have to fight that with the Word of God because God loves you. You can have favor over your life with God. He wants to heal you. He wants you to be in right standing with Him. But in order for that, you have to come back to Him. You have to turn from your sins. You have to turn from your ways of wicked living, the ways that you want to live. And you have to fight the good fight of faith and come into Christ and be what He wants you to be. Amen. Not what you want to be. You have to be what Jesus wants you to be. And He wants you to be just like Him. He wants you to be a follower of Him. Amen. Let's continue here. It says, I have loved you even as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love. When you obey my commandments, you remain in my love, just as I obey my Father's commandments and remain in His love. So, in order to remain in God's love, He says that you... When you obey my commandments, you will remain in my love. So it's our responsibility to remain in the love of Christ. Amen. We are the ones that either walk away from God's love or we can remain in God's love. I have told you these things so you will be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. This is my commandment. Love each other in the same way I have loved you. There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you slaves because a master doesn't confide in his slaves. Now you are my friends, since I have told you everything the Father told me. And Jesus has been giving us dreams and visions of the end times because we are his friends. Amen. And you can also be a friend of God if you choose. You didn't choose me. I chose you. I appointed you to go and produce lasting fruit so that the Father will give you whatever you ask for using my name. This is my command. Love each other. Amen. So I wanted to share that with y'all because it's our responsibility to stay in the love of Christ. Amen. Even if we go to 1 John and 2 John, somewhere in there as well, it says the same thing. Keep yourselves in the love of God. The first commandment is to love God. If we're not listening to God and we're not following in His commands and His ways and His things that He wants us to be doing, then we are choosing to not be in the love of Christ. And then we are only under condemnation. What comes with that comes sickness, it comes health issues, you know, it comes like financial issues, all of those, like everything, all the bad things come onto us because we are choosing not to abide in Christ and abide in the vine and be under His protection. If we don't stay in the love of Christ and stay in Christ by obeying Him, then we fall under this condemnation and this death and decay and just all the bad stuff, you know? We don't want the bad stuff, right? We want to be in Christ Jesus, and we want to have that love and that joy and that blessed hope that He is going to come for us, and He's going to deliver us from the wrath to come, right? So, I love y'all so much. I hope that this blessed you. I hope that this really helped you to come closer to Jesus or even to believe in Jesus. He loves us so much, and He wants us to be with Him, and I want you to be with me and with Jesus in heaven as well. So, if y'all made it to the end of this video, please leave below in the comments to keep yourself in the love of God. Put that below. Keep yourself in the love of God. Amen. Jesus in red letters has told us. So, I love y'all so much, and I'll see you guys again soon in the next one. Bye!